Hello, hello. This is the Virginia Bushcrafter just checking in to see how everyone is doing on this great Sunday night. I'm just out here in the bush experimenting uh, with a suspended, well, a tarp bed. And it's rather warm out here. Very, very warm. It's very, very warm, but I still have a fire. Yeah, I just wanted to drop in to see if anyone was, uh, if anyone was up. I see there is one person. Thank you for coming in. And it's quite difficult to see the little, the small writing. Uh, but, hey, Marilyn, how you doing? It's good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I am just out here in the bush on this Sunday, Sunday night. Uh, I've been out here all day trying something new. Um, I made a suspended a uh, hammock out of, um, uh, they're called uh, contractor bags or, or um, debris bags. So um, yeah, that's what I'm sitting on right now. I'm actually gonna sleep on it tonight. So um, it was a challenge doing it. But um, you can see I have a small fire here tonight because it's actually warm, but I know the temperature is going to drop that is for sure but um yeah so how is everyone doing in uh texas i i've heard that it's very very hot there talked to a few people and i heard that it is very hot but uh it's been we've been getting a lot of rain here um as a matter of fact I got some rain earlier today for maybe 10 minutes and I had to put up had to put up some uh extra protection but uh it is really really hot out here today but I don't know how well I will sleep but I will see but um yeah this is uh just something to do uh, very hot for the last two weeks. 100, wow. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing about that. It's just, gosh, that is, that's something. And this is just June, it's not even July yet. Yeah, that's, that's really, really. Yeah, I'm trying to see here with these have this little thing around my neck that is wet and so trying to stay cool. But yeah, as hot as hot as it is, I still have to have a fire all night. That's that security and and uh serenity, you know. Not a large fire, but definitely a fire. Yeah, I worked a I worked a lot on this thing today. I thought I would I did this last June, June 19th. So I wanted to do it again but do it a little different and see if I could do it a little quicker. It took me almost twice as long uh trying it with different type of different type of rope, different type of knots. So but nevertheless, I got it done. So but I had planned to be out here all night anyway. I uh, try to get out and stay all night at least once a month. And then two days, two weekends, I try to get out on a Saturday or a Sunday. And then the third, the fourth weekend is just basically a rest weekend. So I see there are four more people. Thank you guys for joining, joining in. Um, I hope you guys are able to see me. I, I'm, I have all of my lights on, 
So I hope you guys are able to see me. But, um, yeah, so I know this is Sunday and everybody's probably getting ready for for Monday, um, a work day. So, yeah, but, um, no, I haven't been doing much, just taking it easy, um, getting ready for my major trip. And that's about it, you know. For, for this to be such a small fire, it is putting out a lot of smoke. Very small fire. But it's putting out a lot of smoke, you know. But, and I have, you know, I collected a lot of wood. You know, I'm so used to doing that in the winter time, but I know at night the temperature always drops. So I wanted to be prepared just in case, just in case the temperature dropped, you know, and, and went down really. Because it's, it's been known, it's been known to do that. But I don't know if it would do it tonight, though. Yeah, I don't know if it would do it tonight, but. Yeah, it's really, really smoky here. But yeah, I just, I made this shelter because, you know, I look at shelter as being uh, an extension of your clothing. And you're always going to dress for the appropriate weather. So I am, and, and I made this shelter where it's all open. I can see all the way around me. I did not want to be enclosed. Um, and I'm not too far from the, from the... I'm maybe a hundred yards away from my car, not very far. Just wanted to um, come out here and experiment with this. But um, yeah, I see there are five people, but I don't see the chat moving. I, I'm not sure what's okay. Uh, Prepper Book Club, how are you doing? Thanks for dropping in. I definitely appreciate it. How's everything going? I don't know if you guys hear an echo, echo out here, but um, every time I speak, I hear an echo. I guess because I have all this wilderness, wilderness to myself right now. Yeah, you do good, good. I'm glad you're doing good. That's good. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm out here, man. It's really been hot today. And I really, really worked hard, I'm telling you. Making this uh, hammock, it was really, really tough. But, uh, okay, good. It sound, the sound is good. Great, great. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm out here by myself, and it's just a very big echo. Hey, Bushcraft Builder. Wow, I hardly can't read because of the smoke. Um, found your channel... About two weeks ago, glad to catch a stream. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm, uh, I'm glad you caught my channel. But wow, man, this, this smoke is really, for such a small fire, and the wood is not wet, so. But yeah, for some reason, I feel the temperature like it's, it's, it's going down a little bit. Wow, let's see who else gets coming here. Wow, this smoke is really something. <coughs> yeah, guys, I see eight people here. Excuse me, but I don't know. Some of that wood may have been wet. Maybe that's why we're, I'm getting so much smoke. But I don't know. But yeah, I built a, um, I can't show it to you because it's really dark now, but uh, it, it'll, it will be out on the video. Uh, and I'm going to go over everything tomorrow morning as well. Uh, I was trying to be very detailed uh, when I did it, but it was so hot and um, things were just really, really cumbersome. 
you know, trying to do some, I've done this before, but trying to do it a little different. Hey, XY, uh, X New York Prepper, how you doing, man? I've been enjoying your videos, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. I think I saw one this morning. I see them every day. That's really good. But yeah, I, um, uh, okay, uh, hey, um, Prepper Jack, how you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. I definitely appreciate everyone dropping in. Um, yeah, I'm just out here. I'm, I made a, a hammock and I used um, tree trunk, tree branches. And one of the things, once I did it, I had everything complete. I went to sit in it and one of the branches actually broke. And after I took it out and looked at it, I said, yeah, it's waterlogged. Didn't know that. So I just got another branch. And uh, hey, Kajan, Kajan, how are you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, and I sat in it, and it broke, so I just had to replace it. But this took me a quite quite some time uh, to build it. But um, the only thing that I can see right now is just smoke, you know? That's about it. But, you know, I do feel the temperature dropping a little bit. It really feels good, too. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to have, you know, this is a small, small fire. And I'm going to keep it at that level all night. Nothing gigantic. It's This thing is really watering my eyes up. And But um, top shelf, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a little rain earlier, and I had to put up, um, I don't know if you can see it. That's a Mylar. Uh, that's a 5 by 7 uh, grabber, uh, grabber tarp. And... I actually built another pit, a fire pit right behind this one. In the event that it rains, if it starts to rain, I can actually just move the fire. You know, I'll just take the shovel and scoop up some of the coals and put them in the uh, pit right behind it, uh, which will be which will cover cover the fire. So, but I don't know if we'll get any more rain today, tonight. So, we shall see. So how is everyone else doing? Every, anyone doing any new projects or anything? I'm always trying to do uh, new projects. I did this one last year, but I'm try, I was trying to do it better. Uh, I was trying to do it a little bit more expedient, but it turned out to be quite the opposite. It turned out to be quite the opposite. So, but um, yeah, you know, I have all my lights. Uh, I have a few more flashlights. Uh, I have them on the, um, or they're on the tip over there, tip of the, um, I don't know what you call it, but yeah, I have two more lights and then I have a lot of lights with my uh, 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 solar battery packs. So I'm, I'm really good. I always make sure that I have enough lights. Lights I have to have. Hey, Straight Kitten, how you doing? Thanks for dropping in. I'm not sure if you can see much uh, because it's, uh, I think it's, um, I don't know, excuse me, what time it is here. I think it's maybe close to nine here. But um, yeah, I just wanted to come on and say hello to everyone. And uh, hey, Penny, how are you doing? Thanks for dropping in, Penny. Yeah, I'm having the hardest time reading this chat because it's dark. And um, you are hardcore, my brother, staying out in the dark like that. Well, I think, you know, you know, for bushcrafting, for me, it's, it's really hard to try to express it or um, demonstrate it. I actually have to be out in the bush to really show what, I, what I'm trying to communicate. But um, let's see. No, because you don't have enough light. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I have little three lights up here right now, but I can see the chat, you know. Uh, but I hope you guys are able to see, see me. I can see myself in my phone. 
But, um, oh, yeah, I see it. There was a message deleted. Um, yeah, but I think, you know, to really get the full effects of bushcrafting, you really have to do some overnighters, you know. I mean, I do them in, you know, I do a lot of them in the daytime, but um, I really want to do some of them at night, you know. There's a lot of penny names out there. Yeah, I yeah, p penny prepper. I know there's a penny, a pension, pretty penny pinching or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I've heard of uh, quite a few pennies, you know. <laughs> um, I'll try again this time. I'll tight. Uh, okay, yeah, but um, yeah, you know, when you come out here in the bush, it's just really peaceful, you know. There's um, really no one out here, and you know you don't. You, you may hear a tree very far away when the wind blows. You may hear a tree rub together or something like that, but you know you really don't hear anything, honestly, because there's no one out here, you know. But um, yeah, but I know I'm. I'm going to. Uh, I wanted to set up a. Um, a 360 degree perimeter, but I ran out of time. Um, I can see you if I increase brightness, okay, but I'd rather save, the, okay, yeah, I understand, save the battery, yeah. Uh, love the uh, quiet out there, hate the heat and the humidity. Yeah, it is, it's, you know, but I have to endure it. You know, if you're gonna bushcraft, you got to take the good with the bad. Um, and that's why, I, like I said, I put up another tarp to extend over the fly tarp that I have. I've already dug out another fire pit in the vent that it rains that I can just move the fire. But, um, yeah, just stand prepared. That's why my channel is Bushcrafting, Prepping, and Survival Skills. And for some reason, I was I was using my hatchet today. I'm um, not sure how I did it. I kind of, uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was because I didn't have on gloves uh, when I was chopping something. So I had a little blister that burst and I put some alcohol on it, put a little Band-Aid on it. That's, the, you know, survival, I guess, you know, keep it from getting, getting it, keep it from getting infected. But, um... Yeah, so let's see here. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, love knowing people like my content. Yeah, yeah, I, I like all the content. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube. I mean, definitely every day, you know. Um, but there, yeah, so it's a lot to keep up with. That's for sure. There's a lot, a lot to keep up with. Let me bring this light over here. I'm going to bring this light hope this yeah I think that's um it's a little better for me hey Irma Gardner's Chronicles how you doing yeah I um uh, I enjoyed your live yesterday it was, it was really good I definitely appreciate that but yeah thanks for dropping in yeah you guys you guys you can see it's it's just darkness out here and there's my little fire and I have all this other wood over over there it's like, there is no way I am going to burn that wood. Absolutely. But, you know, you just have to be prepared. And in the event that the temperature drops, I know, I know it's going to drop somewhat. And I even have, you know, some extra clothing in the event that it does. So, I am well set. Yep, I am well set, you know. Um... But once, you know, later on tonight, I'll, I'll put some lights a little further out um, and probably have the fire maybe a little larger. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. That is so true. I'm going to hit the thumbs up before I... Yeah, everyone hit that thumbs up. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I don't like I said, I don't do many I don't do many lives, but um yeah, I would I definitely 
definitely appreciate, you know, you guys hitting that thumbs up, you know. But, um, yeah, tonight's going to be a good night for me. Yeah, I'm going to sit here and just, um, I won't have to get up a lot, that's for sure. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll keep, I have some very, I have some large logs that I really didn't uh, saw, and I'll just throw them over the fire and let them burn, and as they burn, I'll just push them in closer and closer, so... Yeah, I tried. I mean, I, I, I really ran out of time today. Outdoors Addiction, how are you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I saw one of your videos where you made that um, uh, lean-to debris shelter. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I made one also. Um, I haven't been to it in a while. It's an A-frame debris shelter. But the thing about that... Um, that A-frame debris shelter, the only thing that is that I would have to work on is getting used to being enclosed in such a small quarters, you know. But um, I haven't been there in a while. I've got to go back and check on it. Are you drinking enough water? Oh, yes. Believe me, I brought two gallons of water with me. Two gallons, of, maybe a little bit more than two gallons. And uh, I have about a gallon left, but yeah, I'm drinking the uh, water with Gatorade. Um, yes, believe me. And I have, I have right now. I have two 40 ounce clean canteens. I have a 32 ounce, and two 28 ounce, and a 48 ounce. So I do have enough water. That is for sure. But I always want to keep water uh, to, you know, to make sure that the fire's out when I leave. So, yeah, and I, I could not, you know, and that's, that's the thing about a lot of times, and, and I've said this before, people say, you know, you can go three days without water. If you are exerting yourself like I was, like I did today, three days without water, I just don't see it happening. Because, I mean, believe me, I can't, when I got out of my car, I was drinking water. I just constantly kept drinking water and water, and I'll continue to do that uh, throughout the night. But yeah, you, you got to have the water. I just don't, I mean, can you imagine in this heat, working hard and going three days without water? The second day, you know, you're going to really feel bad. The third day, I don't know how you would make it, you know. But uh, I brought a lot of water because where I am, I'm not near any water. Uh, but also I had this thing around my neck that um, it stays wet and um, this helps a lot. So, and like I said, I know the temperature is going to drop. So, but um, yeah, I'm staying, I'm staying cool. Yeah. Piss on the fire instead. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, because the fire is not going to go out until tomorrow morning. Uh, when I leave, and it's going to take me a long time to pack up because I'm going to make sure I take every knot out. I'm not cutting any paracord. paracord. And um, let's see, I'll be listening. I'm sharpening and oiling my knives that need, that need it, and that's a lot of knives. I bet it is. You know what? Sharpening knives, that's really a job. And... What I found out, it is, for me, it's really tough to, to sharpen a just a steel knife. Uh, the carbon steel is much easier to sharpen, especially the Scandinavian grind. But uh, I have a couple of sharpening machines. But I think after you use them so long, it's, you start sharpening, sharpening your knives just by the feel. And some some knives I have at a 20 degree angle, some are at 18 degree angle. Um, maybe my hatchets and my cookeries that has a convex grind, they're maybe close to 25 or 27 degree angle. But yeah, I, I keep my knives really sharp. And every time when I get home from leaving the bush, I immediately wash my knives with uh, liquid detergent soap. I wash them. I dry them. I stand the edges back up. And then I will put a light oil on them. 
and put them back in the sheath. I do that every time. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just I bought a new knife. It is the Condor Wayfair. And it is a five inch. I don't know if you got. Let me see if I can get by the light. Let's see. It's a five inch Scandinavian grind. Has a great patina. But I didn't get it. And it has um walnut. Let's see if you guys can see. It has a walnut handle. But I didn't get a chance to use it a lot. I didn't even practice with it. But um, I had been looking for a Scandinavian knife that was five inches. I have one that is four inches. I'm going to wait until I get off the live before I put that back in the sheet. Don't want to make any mistakes. But um, I was, I was, uh, I have a four inch uh, Condor Teresa, which is great, great uh, Scandinavian grind. But I like, um, I wanted a five inch and I had been looking at the um, Mora Garbert, but that one only has a four inch as well. But when I saw this five inch blade, I knew that was mine. I was taking it out of that guy's inventory. Uh, sharpen my knives by hand. Yeah, by hand. And you know you you know that you're doing it uh, right by the feel of sh Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, when you are sharpening them by your hands, you you can tell. You know you once you have your angle. Um, you definitely can. You definitely can tell. Let me see here. Yeah, I just want to make sure the knife is out of the way. I don't want to accidentally put my hand on it uh, because it is sharp. But um, I didn't make any feather sticks or anything with it. Uh, but one thing that I did today that was very, very interesting, very, very cool. I made a Siberian fire. Now, a Siber Siberian fire. It is not a fire that you want to that if you want to produce a lot of heat. I took maybe I would say an eight-inch branch, and I quartered it into four pieces, and then I used some number 36 bank line at the bottom, tied it up, and I put two green sticks in between so it could get some air, and uh, I actually cooked a meal on it uh, today. So that was a and and the thing about the Siberian fire when you're finished cooking you can actually dismantle it and use it again but what I did I just flipped it over to the side uh because I know I wasn't going to use it again but um that was the first time I've made a Siberian fire before but this is the first time I actually cooked on a Siberian fire so you know, there are a lot of fires to make. You know, there's the upside down fire I've done, the star fire. I've done the long long fire. Um, there are oh, man, so many fires, but I usually just do, um, I haven't done the TP. Yeah, I did do the TP style fire. But um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, different type of fires that you can make, you know. But um, yeah, I just like trying, I like trying different things because you know, I'm a firm believer if you're bushcrafting, you you must you must go out in the bush and practice those skills. You know, practice them at home and then go out in the bush and try. Because when you get out in the bush, there a lot of things are just gonna go not gonna go the same way as you thought, you know. Like I said, I thought I would be able to put this this uh, tarp, I mean, this um, hammock up a lot faster. It took me a lot longer because, um, hey there, um, Deli Delia, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. How's everything in the Big Apple? Yeah, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm just uh, out here. Um out here by my little lonesome self. <laughs> no, not really lonesome. Actually, I'm enjoying it, but you know, 
I'm enjoying making the fire. I'm enjoying, I really, you know, when you check out the video and you'll see how I made this hammock. But the video, today is Sunday. It may be out tomorrow or Tuesday, but I made this hammock. The last time I made this hammock, I used rope. But what I did, I saw the uh, prepared Irishman, and he made, I'm not sure if it was, if you would call it a hammock, but he used these um, debris bags. And we were in Ohio together. Uh, just the Dakota fire put out as much heat as above ground. You know, the Dakota fire does not put out a lot of heat. If you're trying to stay warm, Dakota fire is not the fire to use. A Dakota fire is more or less, uh, you use it when you are doing stealth camping. Now, it is very good for cooking, but the D Dakota fire, again, you know, it has, um, you have your, your regular pit, and then you have the oxygen pit, and then there's a channel that's underneath that. Um, I made one before, and I'm going to make another one, and again, trying to do it better and more efficient, but uh, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to use that inside of a shelter. I made a shelter, was it last week, where I, where I used three large tarps, 9 by 12. Now, that tarp, you can actually build a fire in it. And what I'm going to do in the wintertime, I'm going to make that shelter with the three large tarps. I'll probably use 10 by 10s instead of 9 by 12s. And what I'm going to do is make a decoder fire inside because with the decoder fire, uh, then would a decoder fire be better for hot summer? Yes, I think so. It would because it's not going to produce, it doesn't produce that much heat. You know, today, tonight would have been, would have been great for a decoder fire. But, um, you know, I made the Siberian fire and... Um, that's what I'm doing, but I am going to throw some more wood on this fire here because you can see I'm just down to cold. But um, and you know I made this, I made this, I made this. Um, let me see here. I made this. Um, I don't know if you guys can see any of it right here, but. Um, that's the um, demo bags that's underneath. But, um, yeah, let me just get some wood here. You know, I really didn't, didn't have to get up to do this because I just remembered I put some long pieces in here and all I had to do was just scoot them up but since I have it okay yeah I'm just um let's see um then would a decode for yeah deco yeah for the summer yeah definitely that would be a, a really good fire a decoder fire but a decoder fire man it's uh it was it was it was hard for me to make it. I'm gonna get back up in here. Hold on one minute. Yeah, I made this kind of high, but you know, the saying is that um, I keep feeling water. Maybe that's from when it rained earlier. But you know, they said. Don't make it as high as you're not willing to fall out of the bed. Well, this is high. If I rolled over, well, I got to be careful because the fire's right there. But um, now I won't be rolling over, that's for sure. I won't be rolling over, that is for sure. Yeah, I see I have 10 thumbs up. I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, guys, I, I, um, I've, I've been doing YouTube now for maybe, let's see, maybe a year and a half or a little less than a year and a half and um, 
what I found out, it takes up, it takes a lot of time, you know. Uh, I guess it's because what I chose to do, you know, bushcrafting. You know, uh, when you're bushcrafting, you're also prepping because, you know, you got to make sure you have this. You have to make sure you have that. You have to make sure you have enough of this. And um, so it, it's definitely prepping and, and the survival skills. Um, the thing is, is try not to thrust yourself into any type of survival, you know. Uh, that's that's the main thing, you know, especially at night move slow You're not in, in a hurry to do anything, you know, because the uh, bush floor is covered with leaves It can be uneven um, She devil adventure. Hello. How are you doing? Thanks for coming in, but you know, you want to walk slow uh, You don't want to be in a rush for anything you don't want to twist an ankle or anything like that so um yeah so you know you, you're definitely gonna um when you go out and you stand out overnight you're definitely you know looking at survival skills um you know but i mean where i am now you know i could walk to my car in the dark but uh it's just that you have to get out well, for me, I have to get out and practice. Um, you know, I, I practice at home. I read a lot, watch watch a lot of other content creators. But until you actually go out there and do it, and it's even it's even better when you do it overnight, because you're putting your 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 um you're really um, testing your body, your your skills, and so forth. Because you know you're never you're never going to have a very comfortable sleeping sleep uh, uh, night uh, out in the bush. That is for sure. Um, but um, so you know you, you got to come out there and practice and, and just do the best. Yeah, my fire is uh, it's coming back that quick. Yeah, see now the thing about it is just not really really hot. Because I can tell the temperature's going down, so that's that's well and good, you know. Yeah, it's gonna, and you know, I, I do have uh, more clothing in the event that it got really cold. Um, even if it's 90 degrees, I'm still gonna bring something for night. You know, if it's um, if it's um, if it gets really really cold, you know. But you know, I'm just trying to stay cool with this thing around my neck and. I took my little bandana, I wet it earlier, um, just trying to stay cool. And the, the good thing, also the fire, it, the mosquitoes just went away. There were a lot of flies and bees, and once I lit the fire, they went away. So that's really good. That's really good. So, but um, yeah, you guys have any specific questions? Hopefully that I can answer them, you know. You know, my thing is um, bushcrafting. I love the cutting tools. Um, so many cutting tools, you know. Cutting tools for different purposes. My favorite cutting tool is a kukri. I love the kukris. I love them because I like the way the, uh, the forward weight is on the front. But uh, today I brought a Kershaw Camp 10 which is a bolo style and it has a 10 inch cutting edge. And I like, I like large knives, you know, again, um, cruising is fun anytime. Good evening. How are you doing? Thank you so much for dropping in. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. I know you can't see much because it's very, very dark here, but I, I, I am making a video to show how I constructed this uh, wooden, I don't know if you call it a wooden hammock or whatever, but I, I, I really couldn't get as detailed as I wanted to because it was so hot and I kept having difficulties and, but I kept saying, you know, I'm not even gonna look at my watch, well, my phone, I'm not even gonna look at the phone because, you know, I just know I have to get it done. So I got it done and um, good, I'm glad all is well. Um, yeah, I hope you're um, staying in the air condition 
I heard it's hot as heck down there in Texas. So, but um, yeah, it's um, it's it's uh, I, I, the weather's been strange everywhere. I mean, for like in Virginia, one uh, what today is Sunday. I think it was. We got rain like four days in a row, you know, and heavy rains at time and then just misty rain. But uh, I really, when I was coming out here today, I really thought it was going to rain more than it did. It rained earlier for a very, very short time. But, um, you know, and then I went and put this extra tarp up and everything. But I even had me another fire pit bit built. But... Um, yeah, just in case it does rain, you know, but, but yeah, but everything is going good. Everything is going good. So, uh, visiting my grand, oh, your grand, and you're in New York. Okay, good, good, good. Visiting your granddaughter in New York. Okay. Well, you enjoy your time with, with her, you know, because your granddaughter, you know, you blink your eyes a couple of times and next thing you know, they're grown, you know. Time goes by so fast. My uh, my uh, nephew, uh, he just turned eight, and my uh, niece. I'm not, I'm sorry. My uh, sorry. My grandson. My grandson turned eight years old, and my granddaughter uh, on June the eighth she turned uh, fifteen, and it's like wow, I just can't believe it. Time is going by so fast. Hey, the prepared Irishman, how are you doing? A hey, prepared Irishman, I am using the um, debris bags or construction bags that you left with me in Ohio. But I also, so that's, that's I have those two, plus I bought another box of them. So actually, I have four of them uh, that I'm using right now. You know, I have this theory. Um, yeah, yeah, check out the video, and you'll see how I made it. It's a hammock. But uh, when I saw the way you made your bed in uh, Ohio, it's like, man, I, I have to use those 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 uh, debris bags. Last time I made this, this uh, hammock, I used rope. But uh, I wanted to use the uh, bags. Yeah, so, yeah. So how's everything going with you, prepared Irishman? I hope all is well. I hope all is well, you know. I still got to um, start on that ham radio, you know. Um, I'm actually going to take a class, you know. Um, I haven't been able to do much with it. Uh, but, you know, I've talked to some people saying that I have to get it set up and, and things like that. But I'll definitely be contacting you with questions concerning it. But, yeah, that I really... You know, really um, see the importance of knowing how to use that ham radio. And I'm really, really glad that I won one, you know. Uh, because if I hadn't worn it, I probably would not have taken the interest. Uh, good, just did field day biggest ham radio event of the year. Really? Wow, where, where was the field day? Where was it located? Wow, so it was a big event. Wow, see that, and that's good to know that, you know, they're they're uh, with everything they're big events, you know. Um, there, there's always people out there that's willing to uh, help you. Um, let's see, prepared, our, yeah, yeah. It's it's um, it's good that that um, you know, people will help you. Um, I was just looking down at my fire, man. The thing is really caught back on, caught up again. Yeah, I have some really good wood, you know. But uh, I know I'm switching subject to subject, you know. But, you know, I think it was someone that told me that if you get the heavier the wood, the longer it burns. And um, the wood that I have, this is, oh, it's, so, it's really, it's some really good wood. Hardwood, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, I saw, saw some trees down and I even took my hatchet. And it's like, I'm always sawing and then it's biting my 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 saw blade so i got my little hatchet and start chopping and i uh, got halfway through and it's like no i need to saw so for some of the trees that i wanted to take down that i wanted to fail 
I really should have brought my axe. You know, I have a 26 inch um, S wing hatch uh, axe, and that would that was would have been needed. Uh, and I think that's why I got the blister today using a hatchet to do a to do an axe job. But it's all good. Yeah, sometimes you hear strange sounds, you know, but I don't know. I've, I've heard a couple of cars parking here and coming through here, but when they saw my car and they, they just turned around and left, I guess, I don't know. There's no hunting season, hunting season here right now, so I guess the only thing to do here is camp out, you know. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, guys, I'm just, just uh, taking it easy, you know. Just taking it easy, and that's about it, you know. One thing that I do miss my, uh, I think it was called a Yuko, Yuko uh, Lantern. It had a um, candle, it has a candle in it. I, I shattered the glass portion, and um, this is the first time I've done it overnight and not had it, because I usually set it out maybe 25 yards from where I am. But I'm going to take... Um, one of my lights and put them out and extend them out a little further. I, I may, I'm not sure, but um, I don't know if I really need to, you know. What's happening in, uh, in gym? Okay, I'm over here making some burgers on the grill and gonna have a big tall beer. A, a life is good, okay. Yeah, uh, ex New York prepper, New York City prepper, yeah. Man, you have some, some high, high energy. And some, uh, hey, Goshlin, Gosh Lincoln, how you doing, man? Thank you for dropping in, Gosh Lincoln. Yeah, I am out here in the bush just practicing. Practicing in the dark, doing an overnighter. And there's not 41 people with me as the last time I was out. It's just me. So, so Ghost, Ghost Lincoln, is everything going good with you? You know, I'm just, you know, go, uh, Lincoln, I'm just, uh, when the Irish uh, prepare, prepared men, the prepared Irishman gave me those, uh, I keep wanting to call the contractor bags or debris bags. It's like I, I, I kept saying, I got to use them, man. I, I wanted to use them so soon, but this is as soon as I've been able to use them. So I actually made a hammock out of it. And, um, uh, Whereas you can use two, it's efficient. I, I'm using four. And I'm just trying to lean back a little bit. Uh, smoke again. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing out here. Uh, what's your favorite type of fixed blade? Uh, my favorite type of fixed blade. Fixed blade is a condor. Now... Let's see, I don't know, my Condor or my BK-2. I really like my BK-2, but it's a 5-inch blade. I have a Condor Mountain Pass, uh, Mountain Camp Pass. It has a 7-inch cutting blade. I like that one a lot. Um, I don't know, my my fixed blade. Yeah, those those are the... I'm going to have to go with the Condor Mountain Pass Camp Knife. And I'm going to go with that one because it has a 7-inch cutting edge. Whereas my Becker BK-2 has a 5-inch cutting edge. And my uh, Condor Mountain Pass, it actually has a double bevel. Well, more or less like a micro bevel. So it's, it's, it's like a high, it's a flat grind. Uh, maybe halfway, there's a flat grind halfway, and then there's the first bevel, and then there's a very small micro bevel. And my micro bevel uh, is it's at uh, 20 degrees. And my, uh, my, my Becker BK2 is at 20 degrees as well. But, um, yeah, I guess the, 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 the Condor Mountain Pass Camp Knife would be my favorite. You know, the 7 inches, but, you know, I do like up to 10 inches, and after 10 inches, I just call them machetes, you know. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I really like fixed blades. I have fixed blades that are small as uh, three inches, you know. But that those are something like you know EDC. But I like them because with fixed blades, you're not gonna have to worry about moving parts. What's happening, brother? Uh, how's blue running? Oh, okay. You must be speaking with uh, okay, Ghost uh, Lincoln. Okay. Yeah, but um. I am just out here having fun, but you know, um, I'm really, I'm, I can't wait to really try and do some um, feather sticks with this. Look at that drop point. Look at that. That drop point is awesome. And it has that nice patina on it. And the, I think that the edge is about, I don't know. It's it's maybe a 316. The spine is maybe like 316. That's good to hear. I got to put more money into mine. Okay, outdoors addiction. You might like the Ontario Rat Seven. Really, uh, great survey of. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. Ontario because I don't have any Ontario knives. You know, I have um. I have a, a one that's made. It's called the Jungle King. It has a tanto blade, a saw back. Uh, it's, it's 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 very similar to the the one that's made by Tops, you know. Um, another good one that I like. Hey, Arkansas, how you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. You know I appreciate that. But another knife I have I really like. Uh, thank you, Dal uh, Delala. Thank you so much. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. D A L I A. But um, I I have a Gerber LMF two. And that one, uh, it has a four inch blade. I keep that one at a 20 degrees and it has, um, it has also had part of the cutting edge is serrated. And I used to not like serrated edges, but I really do like serrated edges now. Serrated edges make some of the best feather sticks, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, I even have a butt, a butt cake kukri. Uh, it was gifted to me. And the only thing about my butt cake kukri, it doesn't have a 90 degree spine. But I have the um, King Kukri Machete. It has a, I think it's a 12.6, 12 inch cutting blade, a convex grind. That thing is a, it's, it's a beast. It's so nice that I don't even like bringing it out here. But it's like, why do you have it if you're not going to bring it out to the bush? I've brought it out here a few times. And then I have also the um, the uh, Condor uh, Heavy Duty Knife. That's my favorite. It's a Kukri. It uh, has a 10-inch cutting blade. And that thing is awesome. It is really awesome, you know. But um, another knife, you guys, you might want to check out. It's called the Mossy Oak Outdoors. It's a 10 inch cutting blade and it's a hollow grind. And that thing, when you chop, it really sinks into the wood. Uh, it's a hollow grind, 10 inch cutting blade. Uh, the sheet comes with a whistle and a sharpener. And the grip on that, on the um, uh, um, uh, Mossy Oak uh, Outdoor, uh, Outdoor, the Mossy Oak Outdoor, the grip on that thing is fantastic. And especially when I, when I put that lanyard on it, that thing, it grips, man. It really does. But yeah, I, I love my cutting tools, you know. I love my cutting tools. But, um, wow, this smoke is really, you know, and that's one thing I've got to find. I'd say, you know, to say, I always build your shelter to go parallel with the smoke. It's like, how do you really do that, you know, because you can build your shelter one way, and next thing you know, the smoke is coming from a different way. I mean, the wind's coming from a different way. Yeah, uh, it's 11.59. My grandson bought me the Mossy Oak. Oh, he did? Yeah, I know you I, I know you like Hey, let me know how you like that Mossy Oak. I, and the sheath on that Mossy Oak, it's awesome, too. You know, it actually has the cavity, the plastic part. That and the thing about it, it's so budget friendly, man. I, you know, I have these knives. Is like, 
man, I don't want to take my knives out and get them damaged, you know? But it's like, that's why you bought them, you know, to go out there and use them to the fullest. So, but when I do use them, believe me, I use them. I mean, I use my uh, hatchet most of the, of the day today. Uh, I mean, I did some things with my hatchet that I normally wouldn't do, like cutting those roots in the ground. It's like, you know, it's like everywhere I went and I, I ran into roots, you know, but, um, and what's so strange, I even ran into some rocks, you know, but I did not damage my blade at all, you know, but you know, once I get on, I mean, my blade, my hatchet is still very sharp, you know, it would even cut paper, but you know, when I get home, I'm going to do the usual. I'm going to wash it with uh, liquid detergent soap, um, dry it off, stand the edges up, uh, take that puck, uh, do the convex grind, stand the edges up, put it back in the sheet, and it will be ready for the next one, you know. But I'm also thinking about getting, you know, the, the, the hatchet that I have is 13 inches. The axe that I have is 26 inches, and both of them are by uh, S-Wing. Um, 11.59, yes, and thank you for a great video on the Masayoke, gear. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, getting back to the S-Wings, I want to get the one that has, uh, they say it's 16 inches, but uh, I, I've heard it's really 18 inches, but I like the S-Wings because they are one piece, and I don't ever have to worry about the head loosening on me, you know, because if you look at, and the thing about the uh, S-Wings, they're budget friendly, but, um, but if you look at those, 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 uh, what's that, Grand Forks Brooks ha uh, Axe, man, those things cost, the, you know, I mean, Hose Brook, there are a lot of good, good, uh, Axe, Axe, Axe out there, but they really cost, you know, but, uh, I'm thinking about getting the, just go ahead and getting the, um, the uh, hatchet, I mean the axe that's like 16 inches, and then I'll have the complete set of the S-Wing hatchets, you know. But, um, yeah, I could have used that today, man, trying to chop a tree down, trying to fell a tree with a 13-inch hatchet. No, I got halfway through, and it's like, no, I'm going back and get the saw, you know. But, um, hey, that's how you, you, you know, I, I, you know, that's how you learn, you know, just getting out in the bush practicing. That's how you learn, you know, um, and it's, and then again, again, it's good to do overnighters, you know, because there are some things that you have to do at night that you won't do during the day. Like you, you, you know, you're not going to, I know I'm not going to sleep heavily, um, but, um, you know, I'll sleep, but not heavily, um, watch some YouTube and, you know, talk on the phone, um, you know, watch television, um, you know, because I have a lot of, uh, the, the, I think it was one, two, three, one, two, three. I have like four, what, three solar battery packs and then just one battery pack that's fully charged. You know, I make sure they're fully charged, uh, before I leave my resident, you know. So, go, go slink on. I have the S-Wing 20, oh, the 20, yeah. That, is, is that the one with the blue handle? Because I have it. Uh, the 28 inch camper camper axe in uh, all black. Love. Okay, yours is all black. Okay, mine is silver with a blue handle. Yeah, and mine is 26 inches. So I haven't seen the one that's 28 inches. Yeah, I bet you. Think... Okay, tap to re enter. Yeah, my phone is telling me tap to re enter. I don't know what's going on. I think probably um, that happened before. But um, I guess, guys, we're right. Yeah, okay. I'm, it says tap. To, yeah, I think my phone is just getting warm, you know. But uh, I've been here about an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to hop off of here. And I'm not going to have any hot coffee. I'm going to have me some Gatorade. And that's going to be about it. So anyway, guys, I thank you guys for dropping in. It is definitely appreciated. Uh, be on the lookout so you can see how I made this um, shelter. And, of course, you know I'm going to welcome all of your comments. So this thing keeps saying tap to reenter. So, but anyway, guys, I'm going to head out. 
And I'm going to see you guys on the next video or either in your lives. Take care. I'll see you next time. That's the fire. Yep, I am sure I want to stop the stream.